As we dive into our study of calculus, we need to answer the first foundational question of what is a limit? So we're going to answer that question kind of broadly today. And then a little bit later, we'll answer it more precisely. So we're going to kind of say the intuitive definition of a limit. So the general idea that we're going for when we say a limit, we're saying what value, what should be there even if it is not there. What should be in the function, even if it's not actually in the function at that point? And symbolically, how we'll represent that is we will say that the limit as x approaches some number of f of x equals l or the limit. So again, mathematically, or in words, what those symbols up above there mean is that as x gets closer to a, the f of x gets closer to l. So we're trying to figure out. What is the function approaching? What is it getting closer to as our x gets closer to some value of a? So there's a two main ways that we're going to do this. The first way that we can find a limit is what we're going to call the table method. where we basically take that definition that says as x gets closer to a, well, let's try and get closer to a. We're going to try values closer and closer to a, or to that number that x is supposed to get close to. So what I mean by that is we are going to find the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, if I were to just try and find what 2 actually equals in this function, you'll notice it's going to end up being undefined. There's actually nothing at 2. But we're not interested in what's actually happening at 2. We're interested in what should be at 2, even if it's not at 2. So to set this up, we're going to make a table where we're going to take various values of x that are going to get closer and closer to 2. And we're going to see how that compares to f of x or our function. So we'll start maybe at 1.9. That's a little shy of 2. And then we'll get closer, 1.99. And then a little closer, 1.999. And even closer, 1.9999. Nine. We're going to get really close to 2 and see what happens to f. Now, an important part of a limit is it has to work on both sides. So we can't just do values a little bit smaller than 2. We need to pick values for x and calculate f of x that are a little bit bigger than 2. So we might start with 2.1, go a little bit closer, 2.01, a little bit closer, 2.001, and a little bit closer, 2.001. O1. Now, fortunately, our calculator's table settings are going to make these calculations quite nice for us. So if we turn on our calculator and go into the y equals function, I can hit clear to delete anything that might be in there already. And the function we're working with is x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. 
Now, to preserve the order of operations, I need to put in parentheses the numerator and denominator. So x squared minus 4, close the parentheses, divided by, open a parentheses, x minus 2, and close the parentheses. And now we'll go to our table by hitting second table. And there's values in here from a previous problem we don't need, so I'm going to delete those all out. Our x's here go start at 1.9, enter. Then we've got 1.99. Whoops, too many nines. Enter. Then three nines, 1.999. And then finally, 1.9999, four nines. There we go. And what we see is we get 3.9, 3.99, 3.999. So let's record these. So first we start with 3.9. Then f of x becomes 3.99. Then it became 3.999. Then it became 3.9999. You can kind of see that's getting closer and closer to a very clear number. But to check it, we have to go on the other side. So let's delete out what's in the table here. And let's check these other values, the 2.1, the 2.01, the 2.001. Whoops, too many zeros again. And then the 2.0001. And we kind of see the same pattern here. It won't always be a clear pattern like this, but this one's kind of nice. So we can record our f of x became 4.1. 4.01, 4.001, and then finally 4.0001. And what we see is from the left side, these numbers are getting closer to 4, growing and growing and growing to 4. From the right side, these values are also getting closer and closer, shrinking and shrinking down to 4 as we shrink and shrink down to 2. And so what we can say then is that the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 seems to be, from this table, equal to 4. Now, this doesn't mean that x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 is equal to 4 when x is 2, because it's undefined at that point. There's nothing there. The limit is just what should be there, even if it's not. So we'd say 4 probably should be in there, but it's not. As we get really close to 2, we're getting really close to 4. Let's try another example. The table method is really nice when it works, but it doesn't always work as beautifully as we would hope. We're going to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the cosine of 1 over x. And again, just like before, we're going to take some values for x that are a little bit smaller. It's a little bit smaller than 0. It might be negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.001, negative 0.0001. And we're going to find what f of x equals. And then we'll try some values for x that are just to the right of 0. 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0.0001. 0, 001, and 0.0001, getting closer and closer to 0 from each side. Again, we're going to have our calculator do the dirty work for us, but we need to change the function. So we'll clear out the old function. Starting with our function is cosine of 1 over x, close the parentheses. Now, something to check if I hit the mode button, which is right next to second. I should see that radians is highlighted. We will always be in radians in this course, so make sure the radians is highlighted. So we've got the cosine of 1 over x. And then when we go to our table, hit second table. I've got to delete out the old values. And for the first column, we've got negative 0.1, negative 0.01. Then we've got negative 0.001. Whoops, got an extra 0, negative 0 0.001. And finally, negative 0.0001. And this guy seems 
quite all over the board. What you see is f of x begins by equaling negative 0.8391. Then it was positive 0.8623. Then it was positive 0.5. 56238. Then it was negative again at 0.9522. Let's try delete these out. Let's try the other sides. See what patterns we see on the other side. 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.001, and 0 0.0001. We get actually the exact same numbers with the exact same randomness. f of x seems to be negative 0 0.8391, 0 0.8623, 2, and then 0.56238, and then finally negative 0.9522. Now, in the first example, Coming from the left, we started approaching a number. And coming from the right, we started approaching a number. But this time, we don't seem to be do the, doing that. We are not approaching any one value, which actually, if we were to graph this function using a graphing calculator, or maybe a great website is Desmos, where you can graph it. This graph kind of goes up and down. And then it starts to become really crazy as it gets next to 0. And then it just becomes really crazy. So it's really hard to see what's happening. Because it's going crazy. It's not approaching any one value. So in this case, when our table method fails, we say the limit is x equals 0. Actually, let's do this in red. We will say the limit as x equals 0, or x approaches 0, of cosine of 1 over x equals dne, which is going to be an abbreviation for does not exist. Because it's not approaching any one value. It's kind of going all over the place. We're going to say this limit does not exist. So our first strategy for finding the limit is what's called the table method. We take values that are closer and closer to the number we want and see what the function is getting closer and closer to on both the left and right side. The second method is what's called the graph method where we can actually look at the graph and see what y value is the graph approaching. So let's draw a graph here that we can play with. And let's see, we're going to put a vertical asymptote here at 2. I'm going to put a point at negative 1, comma 3. I'm going to put a hole at 1, comma 2. But I'm also going to put a point at 1, comma negative 1. I'm also going to put a point at 2, comma 1. And then an open point at 2, comma, negative 1. And I'm going to bring the graph down from that 2, comma, negative 1. Starting at the asymptote, I'm going to come up from the asymptote and then kind of go through my points. All right, so we got this funky looking graph. A lot of weird things happening, but that's OK. The first question we're going to attempt to answer is to see if we can find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this function. 
So as x approaches negative 1, what we see is the graph is really approaching a y value of 3. So we will say the limit as x approaches negative 1 on this graph is 3. What's the limit as x approaches positive 1 of this graph? Now, it's interesting to note at positive 1, this graph clearly is equal to negative 1, because that's where the solid dot is. There is an open dot on the graph, which means there's a hole that's not actually there. But with limits, we're interested in what actually should be there, even if it's missing. And you see the graph coming in from both the left and the right are really getting close to a height of 2. And so we'll say this graph is getting closer and closer to 2 as we get closer and closer to 1. Even though if I were to ask what f of 1 is, f of 1 is actually equal to negative 1. But it doesn't matter what the point actually is. What matters is what is the point getting closer and closer to. One more. Let's take the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. Now at 2, this is interesting. Because at 2, from the left side, let me see if I can get rid of some of this red. It's kind of getting in the way. At 2, we see from the left side, the graph is getting close to 1. But when we come in from the right side, it seems the graph is getting closer and closer to negative 1. Since those are not the same values, it's not approaching the same value from both sides, we have to say that this limit does not exist because we're not approaching one value. We can't say there's one value that should be there because it's really approaching two different values which kind of sets up the idea that if we're approaching one value on the left and one value on the right, why don't we call those two different limits? And that sets up this idea of what we're going to call a one-sided limit, where we have this notation of the limit as x approaches some number a. And we'll put a little negative sign like a superscript of f of x. And when we see that negative sign, that negative sign means I'm only interested in coming from the left side, coming from where all the negatives are on the left side of the graph, versus if I want the limit as x approaches a with a little positive subscript, that positive superscript means I only want to come from the right side. So for example, if I have a graph like this, Let's say comes down kind of like x squared up until we have a gap at 1, an empty hole at 1, and it's going to drop down to negative 2 and become a straight line from there. So now I can ask, what is the limit as x approaches 1? Even though it approaches two different values at 1, if I put a little negative superscript, that means I'm only interested in coming in from the left side. And so when I come in from the left side, we see it's approaching positive 1, which is different than if I ask for the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of the function. Coming in from the right side of the function, it's going down here to a y value of negative 2. So now we can calculate the limits if we specify if we're coming from the left or the right side. Notice, however, we still cannot say the limit as x approaches 1 
because these are not approaching the same value. From one side, it's 1. From the other side, it's negative 2. It does not exist. In fact, it only exists if the left and right are the same. Now, if they happen to both be the same, that's great. Then it exists. But if they're not the same, then it's not going to work. Let's look at the idea of one-sided limits, uh, not with the graph method, but with the table method that we did at the beginning of this lecture. Number two, let's make what's called a piecewise function. If f of x is equal to, and it's got two parts, it's equal to x minus 2 if x is less than 1. And it's equal to x squared plus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1. So just like before, it's got one part on the left and one part on the right. We use one equation for small values of x. We use another equation for uh, bigger values of x. So we're going to use a table. to find three things. The limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f of x, the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x, and then we're going to use that to decide if the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x actually exists. And if it exists, what is that number? So let's start with the table on the left side. We're going to look at values of x from the left of 1, which means we want to be a little bit less than 1, so maybe 0.9, getting closer, 0.99, getting closer, 0.999, and then even closer, 0.9999, to see what the f of x equals. So we're on our calculator, we'll hit y equals, and clear out the old equation. When we're on the left, we're smaller than 1. So smaller than 1 is going to be x minus 2, because x is smaller than 1. And we'll hit second table, delete out the old values, because those aren't doing us any good. The new values are 0 0.9, 0 0.99. 0.999 and 0.49999. And what we see is essentially what we're ending up with is negative 1.1, negative 1.01, negative 1.001, and ultimately pretty much negative 1 when we round it off. So what that tells me, then, is that the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, using numbers slightly smaller, of f of x, we're approaching or getting closer to negative 1. Now let's look at the right side. Using x values to the right, slightly higher than 1. We might start with 1.1, 1 1.01, 1.001, 1 .001, and 1.0001. 1 .001. And we're going to see what happens to f of x. The key here now is I have to go to y equals and delete out my old function, or clear out my old function. Because now that x is bigger than 1, we have to use the other equation, the second equation, which is x squared plus 1. And when we hit second table and clear out the old values, our new values are 1.1, 1.01, 1.001, 1 and 1.0001. And we see a definite pattern emerging as we fill in our f of x column. That was 2.21. 2.0201, 2.0002, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001, 2.0001
2.02 and 2.0002. But we see those are definitely approaching a clear number. So we can announce that the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x using slightly bigger numbers, we're getting closer and closer to 2. So what does it all mean about the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x overall? Well, because the left and right are approaching different numbers, one's approaching negative 1 and one's approaching positive 2, these are not the same. So the limit does not exist purely at 1. Now, there is another case that I want to look at of what can happen as you're trying to make your table. I think we're up to e now. What I'm going to call infinite limits. For example, if I take the limit as x approaches 3, we'll go from the left this time, of 1 over x minus 3. Didn't need to be in parentheses, but it will be in parentheses for our calculator anyways. So we're going to look at values for x and see how our f of x compares. I said only on the left, so we need a little bit smaller than 3. We'll start at 2.9. Then we'll try 2.99. 2.999 and 2.9999 to get us really, really close. Hit y equals. Clear out the function 1 divided by, in parentheses, so we don't lose our order of operations, x minus 3. Close the parentheses. And then we'll head to our table, second table. Clear out these numbers because we're interested in 2.9. 2.99, 2.999, and 2.9999. And there's a clear pattern here. We go from negative 10 to negative 100 to negative 1,000 to negative 10,000. So when we're trying to calculate the limit as x goes to 3 from the left of 1 over x minus 3, we see it's not necessarily approaching any one number, but it's definitely going somewhere specifically. It's getting bigger and bigger, or more and more negative would be a better way to say it. So what I'm going to say is this is actually going to negative infinity. Because as I get closer and closer to 3, I'm going to get a more and more negative number. In fact, a similar thing happens if we go to the other side of the function. Let's take the limit as x goes to 3 from the right of 1 over x minus 3. And look at various values for x and how f of x compares. From the right, we need to be slightly bigger than 3. So we'll start at 3.1, get a little closer, 3.01, closer, 3.001, and closer, 3.0001. And let's see how this compares on our calculator. Same function, so I don't have to type it in again. But for my x values, we're going from 3.1 to 3.01 to 3.001. Whoops, got an extra 0. 3.001. And then finally, 3.0001. And we see the exact same pattern starting to happen here. We've got 10, 100, 1,000, and 10,000. The only difference is now the graph is not negative. Instead, it's positive. So the limit as x goes to 3 from the right of 1 over x minus 3, it's getting bigger and bigger and positive. So we will say it's going to positive infinity. So our limits can actually be infinite, positive or negative infinity, if it truly is getting bigger and bigger, or negative bigger and bigger without bound. 
And what this actually means about the graph, this means the graph has a vertical asymptote. at 3, or x equals 3 would be a better way to say it. In other words, if I were to sketch a graph of this guy really quick, and I'll just make a small version of it, 1, 2, 3, at 3, there's going to be a vertical asymptote. And the graph is going to bend around that vertical asymptote. And so you see, when we're approaching from the left, it's going down to negative infinity. And when we're approaching 3 from the right, it goes to positive infinity. Before we wrap up here, let's do one more problem where we just find a bunch of limits just to practice. So I'm going to draw a graph on here. We're going to go 4 each direction. And at negative, th negative 3, comma 3, we're going to put a point. And from that point, it's going to curve up to the left. We're also at negative 3, 2, going to put an open point. Then at negative 1, comma 4, we're going to put an open point. And then at 2, we're going to put a vertical asymptote. So we're going to connect the open point to open point is the maximum, and then come down to the asymptote. And then at 3, comma 2, we'll put another point and kind of bring the graph down and into that point. I want to put one more point on this graph at negative 1, comma 1. We have that open dot at negative 1. The close point means where the point actually is. Might not be where it's supposed to be, but that's where it actually is. So I've got nine of these. I want to see if we can calculate. First, we're going to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. Now, at negative 1, what is the graph getting close to? Not where the graph is actually. You'll see from the left and the right, the graph is getting closer and closer to a height of 4. So we say the limit at negative 1 is 4, because that's what should be there, even if it's not. Notice that's different than asking, what is f at negative 1? Where is f actually at negative 1? And at negative 1, on the curve, there's a hole at negative 1. The actual negative 1 point is at a height of 1. How about this one? The limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left of f of x. Well, at negative 3 from the left, we see this graph is approaching a height of 3. We can compare that with the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right of f of x. When we come from the right or the positive side, notice it comes down a bit lower to a height of 2. So the limit there is approaching 2, which means if I asked what the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x is, we can see already from the left and the right, we're approaching two different values. They're not the same. Because they're not the same, this limit does not exist. It must be the same to exist. How 
about the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x. As we get closer from the left side to 2, notice this graph is going down to a vertical asymptote. Because we're going down all the way, this is actually equal to negative infinity. It goes down all the way to infinity before it actually gets to 2, because it will never touch that vertical asymptote. Similarly, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x, looking at the right side, we see the graph is going up, up and up and up without bound or stopping. It's going to be equal to positive infinity. What's the limit as x approaches 3? of f of x. Now, 3 is right where this point is on the right side. And notice when we come in from the left or the right, it's going to that same height of 2. So we'll say the limit is approaching 2. And what you might also notice is the point that should be there actually is there. So we can also say that f of 3 is also equal to 2. And so when the limit and the point are equal to each other, that's significant to us. We say that means the graph is continuous at that point, because the limit and the point are the same. But we're going to spend a whole day on continuity a little bit later. Right now, what's important is that you get very comfortable finding limits both from the graph method and also from the table method. So take a look at uh, some of the assignments in the book. And I look forward to seeing you in class so that we can discuss these limits in more detail.